One of the earliest examples of verbal communication in a video game is the arcade game Berserk, released in 1980. The game used speech synthesis to produce a vocabulary of 30 words in the English version, and cost roughly $1,000 per word to implement in the game. It wasn't until the arrival of the CD-ROM that the use of dialogue in video games became truly widespread as the increased storage capacity allowed developers to include more, larger, and higher quality audio files in their games. This revolutionized communication in video games, allowing our favorite characters to express themselves verbally. I don't like the way you are looking at me, okay? 40 years on from Berserk's release, we have seen countless jumps forward in digital technology. We now have access to incredible amounts of storage space, allowing developers to create immense adaptive dialogue trees and sophisticated audio tools capable of emulating the acoustics of any environment. For this video, however, we're interested in dialogue specifically. Let's take a look at some of the theory behind how dialogue is implemented in video games today. Dialogue in video games is usually categorized as either narrative or environmental. Narrative dialogue focuses on exposition and storytelling. Its job is to immerse the player in the game's story and the world, and can include conversational dialogue between characters, audio logs, or even non-diegetic dialogue, such as narration. You think this guy's connected to the girl from the school? That'd be a hell of a coincidence if they weren't. I hate these small groups. <laughs> Big groups, it's a straight fight. These loners, they could be hiding anywhere. Environmental dialogue is used to provide contextual information to the player, such as the alert status of an NPC, and is used to help the player to make better informed decisions and react to specific gameplay situations. In this video, we'll be focusing on how The Last of Us Part 2 uses environmental dialogue in the combat encounters in forms of barks. As defined by Adam Ritchie, senior voice designer at Massive Entertainment, a bark is a word for a voice line designed to rationalize and telegraph the actions and reactions of an NPC. Barks can be used to make non-player characters appear intelligent and emotive by allowing them to communicate with one another and react to events in the game world. Barks are typically categorized as either literal or non-literal. Literal barks communicate the intentions and actions of an NPC and are often context-specific. These lines convey important situational information to the player, allowing them to anticipate and respond to NPC's actions, such as an enemy combatant throwing a grenade or reloading their weapon. The same principle is true for all allied NPCs who might use literal dialogue to give the player hints and warnings throughout the game. It's an archer on the right. Non-literal barks are used for characterization and world building and help to create an immersive experience for the player. In Adam Wirtz's words, once again, non-literal barks build the characters and the world. They are mood setters and flavor. The purpose of these lines is to humanize the NPCs and allow them to express emotions within the given gameplay context rather than provide specific information to the player. Oh, there's so many squads getting pulled in for one trespasser. One particularly strong use of non-literal barks in The Last of Us Part 2 is the way NPCs react to being grabbed and restrained, showing a combination of fear, anger, and surprise that humanizes them and adds a feeling of significance and weight to the player's actions. Just shut up. All right. Just relax. Shut it. When implementing barks into a game, it is important to do so in a way that adds to the immersion of the game. If barks are too repetitive or isolated from the rest of the game audio, they can end up sounding contrived and negatively impact the believability of the game world. To mitigate this, Games use systems that turn a lone, out-of-context bark into a fluid dialogue, making NPCs' interactions with the game world a lot more believable. 
this is where we jump into the more technical side of game development and take a look at how some of the systems were implemented in The Last of Us Part 2. In simple terms, audio implementation is a process of creating a rule set that determines when and how a specific sound will play. This includes contextual triggers such as the position of characters and their actions, and will usually apply additional processing to the sound to fit it into the game world, such as a reverb to match the game environment. Using this rule set, the game will choose from thousands of lines of dialogue and decide exactly which line or lines should be played. Let's run through an example. Imagine a combat encounter where an enemy NPC has run out of ammo. This event will trigger a logical line that tells the system what is happening, which sends a request to the dialogue system for a physical dialogue line, meaning the actual voice line. The dialogue system then looks at various factors including the AI behavior state, the NPC and player location, the NPC group size, what lines have been used recently to reduce repetitiveness, and lastly, the priority. The dialogue system will then pick a line based on these criteria and send it into the game engine to playback. Let's take a closer look at the factors that determine this choice of line. First, AI behavior. To fit the context of the situation and ensure that the right family of dialogue lines are played, the system needs to know what behavior state the AI is currently in. For this, the developers of The Last of Us Part 2 used a finite state machine with four different states. These states are unaware, investigate, combat, and search. The system determines what state an NPC is currently in and selects dialogue lines according to the current behavior. This eliminates the possibility of lines playing at inappropriate times such as NPC shouting combat lines while in an unaware state. The next state is location. Where is the player and the NPC in relation to them? To simulate NPC intelligence, the Naughty Dog audio team created a location-aware AI which utilizes a system that tags objects in the environment. Using these tags, NPCs can say location-specific dialogue lines. The system works by assigning in-game assets with one of two region tags, general and specific. General tags are used to identify a general environment, like a building or street, whereas specific tags are used to mark objects in the environment, such as a car or a tree. The system then compares these tags to establish whether the NPC and the player are in relation to another. If the player and the NPC are in different general regions, then the NPC callout will use a line with the general location information. If the player and NPC are in the same general regions, then the callout will be more specific. The NPCs you encounter are aware of each other's presence and the dialogue system considers how many NPCs are in a group when selecting lines. If multiple cooperating NPCs are present, the system can select lines that create a dialogue between them. Kevin! What's going on? He's fucking dead! Who the fuck's out there? I want every building in the area searched. If only one NPC is present, for example if their allies have been killed, they will adjust their callouts accordingly. The last stage is priority. Deciding what lines are most important and ensuring that they can be heard clearly over everything else. Dialogue lines are given a level of priority depending on their function. These are from lowest to highest, efforts, exertion noises, grunts, etc. AI chatter, in-game cinematics, hit reactions, and deaths. The last two are the highest priority because they provide direct feedback to the player regarding their actions, whether an attack has been successful and whether an enemy is still a threat. The way this prioritization works in practice is fairly straightforward as explained by Jason Gregory in his GDC talk on The Last of Us Part 1. All right, and so the priority system just works like this, very simple. Line one is playing on a character, and if a lower priority line comes in, it's rejected, and if a higher line comes in, it'll interrupt. Straightforward. To avoid repetition, the lines are pre-shuffled with the rule that the last line that was played doesn't match the first line of the new shuffle. Additionally, some lines have a higher probability of playing than others, allowing the developers the ability to steer the dialogue towards certain outcomes as needed. 
One of the most important features of dialogue in games is the spatial information that can be imparted on the player through post-processing. Humans can tell the location of a sound based on the time difference between the sound hitting each ear, as well as any changes in volume and frequency content caused by how the sound interacts with the local environment. Game engines can simulate the movement of audio within the 3D space using algorithms that change the volume of a sound and apply filtering effects based on the current state of the game world. Cone attenuation is used to simulate the directional propagation of a sound, applying filters to a sound depending on whether the sound source is facing towards or away from the player. This might mean applying a low-pass filter to an NPC's voice lines when they're facing away from the player. We can also identify the position and location of a sound source based on the reflections of the sound in the local environment. To achieve this, developers use reverb zones that simulate the acoustic properties of an environment. This reverb is then applied in varying amounts to all the sounds in the game world, creating a sense of space and realism to the overall soundscape. Without any reverb, the game's many sound effects would feel very unnatural. God damn it! No. One particularly important element of sound processing for a game such as The Last of Us Part II is the simulation of what happens when there are objects placed between a sound source and the player. This is known as obstruction, when the space between an audio source and listener is partially blocked, and occlusion, when the audio source and listener are blocked completely. These effects are very useful in stealth focus section of gameplay, as they convey information to the player that can indicate whether an NPC may have a line of sight of the player character, or whether their view is obscured. Obstruction works by applying volume attenuation and a low pass filter directly to the signal path. Reflections from walls and hard surfaces are routed through a second auxiliary bus, and so they are unaffected. When occlusion occurs, however, both the audio source and reflections are affected by the volume attenuation and low pass filter, creating a more dynamic effect. The last effect is fall off, also known as acoustic attenuation, which is used to simulate the linear distance between the player and the sound source. In practice, this means gradually reducing the volume of sounds as the source gets further and further away and applying a low-pass filter to emulate the loss of high frequencies as the sound travels further. The rate at which sounds are affected is modeled using a fall-off curve. They are custom-made by the sound designers to strike a good balance between clarity and realism. If the fall-off curve were realistic, then the player would miss a lot of important dialogue simply by being too far away from an NPC. Creating a custom fall-off curve allows the player to hear distant conversations clearly without losing the attenuation effects that help a listener determine how far away a sound source is. Used together, these processes make the game's dialogue and effects feel like they are happening in an immersive and believable world. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. If you want to further delve into this topic, then you can find all the presentations and articles I've used listed in the description below. I also want to give a massive shout out to our awesome Patreon followers for the kind support. Cheers guys and see you next episode.